Uh, thanks for joining us again at uh, Nomad PDU or Renewal Biz. I'm Wayne Roberts, and I'm going to talk to you today further about the Nomad PDU. Hope you're going to cover everything off from its applications and uses right through to charging, uh, which is uh, one of the uh, most common questions we get from customers. So I'm going to try to cover everything today. Um, again, there's some tutorials underneath uh, uh, this uh, podcast. Um, so most common questions and answers to go to that, that'll answer a lot of questions. The first thing I do want to say, though, is the packaging for this unit does have the instructions on the back. And there's three pages of instructions internally. Even though there's three pages of instructions, we can still get asked basic questions about the unit. But let's talk about its, um, its features and benefits to start with today, and then we'll move on through into charging aspects. Uh, the red and black poles you can see here, these are actually charging poles, and they're for a solar, unregulated solar panel. Um, that'll take a maximum up to 10 amp. So something between a 150, 200 watt uh, solar panel without a regulator, we'll go into that later, uh, you can just connect direct to the red and black poles here, and there's an internal, MPPT controller, so it'll actually uh, set the uh, charge rate up for the um, for the lithium battery. So the unit itself, 11 kilograms, uh, it's 320 by 315 by 90. It does not have to be lying up this way, stand upright. You can do it on the side, you can lie flat, you can slide it under a seat, for example. So there's no need to have it up this way. It's just so that we can see that for the for the purpose of this podcast. Um, you'll find over here, this is a regulated input. The regulated input is 25 amp, maximum 25 amp. First question that people will say is, can I use my current DC-DC in my vehicle to charge it? We don't know what the uh, the charge on your vehicle is. We don't know how it acts with our BMS, which is the uh, battery management software or, so, uh, or solution in there. So it might be a multi-stage charger. We don't know. And the fact is that most of those chargers will be upwards of 25 amp, usually 30, 40, or 50 amp. So this, again, 25 amp maximum charge regulated. So I currently down here got a 300 watt solar panel. And that 300 watt solar panel, it's not that uh, efficient but that does have a regulator on it already. And we'll show you that shortly. And that goes into here. And that realistic is going to probably give me only seven or eight amp, which is still a fine charge anyway. Um, 100 amp hour battery, really the charge rate on this, a good charge rate is about 10%. That's kind of a rule of thumb. Um, it's not an exact science. Um, each of the ports, two SIGA sockets and an angle, they are all 10 amp outputs each. Okay, then you've got your dual USB ports over here and 2.1 mil jacks. So the two SIGAs, the one angle, they're all 10 amp outputs. The USP, the jewels, okay, so they're 2.5 and one amp outputs there. I'm charging my satellite phone at the moment, um, as you can see. And the other thing I want to point out on the end here is that you've got these two little jacks. They're 2.1 mil jacks. So these little jacks are available from pretty much any electrical store. And what they allow you to do is you can see here, a red and black cable connected into here. It's very, very clear on this. And that allows you to plug in, like I've got here 14 lights. So I've got 14 lights running across this C container, and that's all running off one of these jacks. It's only pulling 1.47, and that's with the uh, actual um, uh, charging of the, um, the satellite phone. Um, but what that means is you don't have to type the rest of these for your lighting. You can just get these little jacks and away you go. Each of these ports here are 5 amp each. So you actually, you could run a fridge, like that fridge down there pulls less than 5 amp. I could actually cut the wires off, red and black, and that will run it. I do get people say, no, it'll burn out. In actual fact, I've got a 93 litre fr uh, fridge in here and that can run off this as well. And I've run it for weeks on end. So just to give you an idea what the use of these are. So you can plug that in there, plug a red and black, okay, for all your lighting or any other lower, lower uh, amperage products that you have around. Okay, the Anderson output here, it does say 10 amp on there. It is a 20 amp output. Um, the new ones you'll see out in June will have a, a label on it saying 20. But all the V5s, these ones with the colours around it, are all rated at 20 amp output from here. Maximum output of the unit at any given time, at any given time, is 20 amp. Do not exceed that for a couple of reasons. Obviously, the unit's going to shut itself down, but the LED screen here, which shows you how much draw, this is how much amp is being pulled out of the unit. So basically, you can look at the screen and go, well, how many amp can I draw at the unit at any given time? Maximum 20 amp. But you've got to remember, it's maximum 10 out of each of these, so you couldn't run 15 or 20 amp out of one of these. It's 10 amp max, and then you can have 20 out of this. So if you had a 20 amp out of there, you could actually run, quite simply, you could have a Y lead like this, and I could quite happily run a fridge off this, and I could probably, with that, I could also run something like a kettle or an oven. So I can actually have a Y lead. So now in the back of my vehicle, for example, I've got two of these, and I could run, say, two fridges if I want to. There's no problems there, because that's 20 amp. So if you had two 60 or 80 litre angle fridges, you could plug them both into this, and that will quite happily uh, run your fridges for you, no problems at all. I am going to plug the fridge in I've got down here in a minute just to get some load on to have a bit look at uh, some of the accessories. But um, that is the LED screen 
for the draw. If you overdraw, it goes over 20 amp. This is rated for 20 amp. It'll go up. It'll still go up. Uh, you might get it to 30, 40 amp, and this has happened. This will actually melt, um, which means you're trying to exceed and draw as much. You're trying to draw more than it's actually spec'd at, so don't do it. Over here, you've got a voltage charge. Um, full charge here. We've still got a lot of questions, even though it's on the uh, instructions here. It's also in the instructions in, in, in the actual uh, box. Maximum charge is 12.6. That's fully charged. So 12.7 to 12.5 fully charged. Discharge is 8.4 to 8.8. .8. The BMS internally would shut itself down at 80% BOD, okay, which is depth of discharge. So if this is saying 12.5, um, quite happily that you can say it's reasonably close to full, probably 98%. The little charge light on here, that'll tell you when it's charging. And it does come with an AC-DC charger. And the AC-DC charger is an 8 amp charger. But a couple of things I want to point out with this is when you plug this in, okay, it's an 8 amp charger. As this is closer to full, it will draw less from this unit. So sometimes you'll find if it's 12.4, 12.5, and I start pulling three or four amp out of here, the red light will go off. And people think there's a fault. It's not a fault. This is very important. The charge from this unit will go through and run the accessories, okay? And then whatever's left, then it might show the red light. If there's no red light showing, all that means is that there's more current going out than there is coming in. Very, very simple. And this is important to understand when you run a solar blanket. And it's, it's very, very, very common that we get most of our calls from people saying that the, the Nomad's not charging. It's not correct. It is charging. With the charger, though, I want to point out, on the actual AC-DC charger, the red light here indicates that it's charging. Okay, so the red here means it's charging. Okay, if I pull this out, you'll see that that's gone green. Okay, sometimes what you'll find is this will be plugged in, and the light will be green here. And that will be off and you think there's a fault okay if it's fully charged it's going to float so it might go on and off okay but that would be an indicator that it's not charging so even if that light there just disappeared for example you can still see that this will go and slowly crawl up and um, because when you when you plug, unplug it for example what will happen typically if there was no light there you'll find this would might drop maybe one point or something like that so just for the sake of the exercise i'm going to plug this in again here okay so now it's charging it won't be charging at AM. We're going to do a test on that in a moment with the solar panel. But just leaving on there at the moment, you'll see that it's charging. Now, one of the most useful toys you can get are these called pocket inverters. The reason I say that these pocket inverters, these specific ones are a modified wave. Um, they're a 150 watt. And it's important to realize, okay, 150 watt, this actual charger draws 109 watt. Most of your uh, laptop chargers, they draw around 100 watt. And you've got to remember that just because it's got a plug in here for 240, you can't plug your hairdryer or your uh, plasma gun or your Ninja 1000 watt. Okay, a 1000 watt, um, a thousand watt microwave or a 1000 watt uh, blender, okay, it's going to melt this. So you don't use it for that. But what it's great to use it for is things like if you're out in the in the, you're camping, you might want to charge your 12 volt uh, battery uh, batteries for your your cordless drills, which is really common. And it's one of the reasons we put a 25 amp uh, BM, or a 25 amp BMS in here is to be able to take a, a higher charge for the tradies when they're out and they're working off site. Sorry, they're working off grid basically. Uh, construction. They can take their fridge and they can trolley it out with their Nomad, and they can have their you know fridge running and all the rest of it. But they can also be charging these. So these I know when the battery's flat, you'll see that the charge, or sorry, the current will come out. Firstly, the inverter goes on. Okay, and then secondly. Um, the charge for the battery once it's charging if this was empty this would pull around about 6 amp as you can see now it's 5.8 but again this was not completely discharged it's about three quarters full so it's pulling five um, but that's also with the uh, USB plugged in um, and the inverter pulls about 0.5 so you can charge this for example we see we've got 5.8 there which means we still have a little bit left that we can plug in. Now, you can plug in, for example, and we will do it, uh, a little camping oven like this. Now, this camping oven will draw, they say 10 amp. I know it draws a bit more. And what I've done is I've cut the end of it off on the one I've got and put an Anderson on there. But for the sake of the exercise, you can heat up your pies, for example. I can plug this in here. Okay. 14.15, 15.6, 15.9. Okay, so now you've got the oven running. So you've got about three or four amp left. 
You've got to remember, we're running your lights across the top here, and you've got your oven running here. So, for the just for the sake of the exercise, let's pull this inverter out. Okay. And the other really, really cool thing you can do with these, and that's why they're just so useful, is not only can you plug other things in when you're out uh, camping, like uh, even uh, a small blender, or if you want to go over the top, you can get yourself a um, uh, electric carving knife if you wanted to. And I've got, so I've just gone over to 18. Just under, okay, so that's a carving knife. Um, and what else could I run off it? You can actually run a multi speed blender, which I've got here, and again, I'll just plug it in. I know this is about a 170 watt blender, but again, when I'm putting it on, I don't have to put it on the highest speed, but I can just see how much amp it brings up. So the blender's running now. I've got the oven still running over here, and we're still at 13.5. So look, the trick is if you like, as long as you keep watching the screen and you don't go over 20, you know that you're okay. So if I start unplugging these things here, for example, okay, I'll take this out. Okay, what else can you use the inverter for? Not only can you run all your other electrical appliances, small electrical appliances, don't run anything large like a, a high-powered hammer drill and stuff like that. You can run, for example, a Dremel, uh, which is my Dremel here. I do use that and that runs at about six amp. So the other thing you can use this for is if you plug this into your vehicle, and when we talk about charging the unit, you can actually plug this into your car, okay? Your car should be rated 12 volt and 10 amp minimum. You need to check that because it's going to pull 150 watt. You plug this into your car. You now basically have a 240 volt um, connection, but don't plug in, again, don't plug in a 1,000 watt uh, Ninja uh, because you will actually end up melting the, uh, the cabling in the car if not melt this, okay? You plug this into the car. You now got a 30, 240 volt uh, point. You can take your AC-DC charger here, and what you can do is I could actually take this, my, my 8 amp charger, okay, I plug my 8 amp charger, that's now into the car. So now this is in the car, and I've got my 8 amp charger connected, and if that was in the vehicle, it would fire up, and this would go red. Now you can do this, it's not a permanent um, solution for charging the Nomad when you're away. It's great to use it for a couple of hours here and there when you're between solar blanket, okay? You do have to remember, though, with 80% DOD, this is not AGM, okay? So what it means is that you have so much more power. If you're running things like ARB fridges and Engels and Wacos, you will find that typically if you've got it on 2 degrees, depending on the ambient temperature, whether the food's cold, how full it is, and so on, people are getting, you know, 8 to 10 days in a lot of cases with 40-litre fridges. So this one down here is not very efficient. I'm going to plug that in for you right now. And so I've got the fridge plugged in. I've still got the oven plugged in. I've still got lights plugged in as well. Okay. So now that's all fired up. And the fridge will kick in in a, in a moment and then it will end up going up over. Uh, probably another four or five amp as it just starts. You notice that if I left this plugged in, which I'll do again, just so we've got power going in, you'll notice that the red light's on here. It says it's charging. There's no red light on here. We'll get an email. We'll get an email saying there's, there must be a fault. It's not. This is actually charging, and what's happening is because there's a lot of amperage going out, it's more that's going in. Because this is up around about probably 88, 90% full, it still won't draw as much amperage from this anyway. So this is probably putting about five, I reckon five to six in at the moment, but it's drawing out eight. So that light, that light.